In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the concavity of a graph. And whether a function is concave up or concave down has to do with the curvature. And so we say concave up if it's curving up. And I kind of remember that concave up sounds like a cup, so I want the curve to go up. And concave down is just the opposite. We're going to curve down. If we look at the graph, here of y equals x cubed minus 9x, and you look at the places that are concave up and draw a tangent line. The tangent lines fall below the graph. The tangent lines fall below the graph. If you think about the different slopes, the slopes are getting bigger as we move from left to right. So, um, drawing another one in. Notice these positive slopes are getting more steep. The negative slopes are getting less steep. So for a concave up part, the tangent lines are below the graph. For a concave down, our tangent lines are above the graph. There's one. These were positive slope places, and notice that the steepness is decreasing. And here are some negative slope. Oops. The slopes are becoming more negative, but those tangent lines are above the graph. So we say something is concave up on an interval. Um, Oh, sorry, I was reading my, forgot my stuff. We're concave down on this graph for x less than 0, and we're concave up on this graph for x bigger than 0. And we're going to determine the concavity by looking at the second derivative. So here's some definition type stuff. A graph is concave up when the second derivative is positive. So if you have a positive second derivative, you're concave up. Negative second derivative says that you are concave down. And if you ever have a place that changes concavity, either in our previous graph it changed from concave down to concave up, we'd call that point the inflection point. So in our previous graph, the point zero, zero was an inflection point. Um, and we determined concavity with the second derivative test. It's very similar to what we've seen before. We're going to take the second derivative. We're going to find out where the second derivative is either equal to zero or undefined. And then we're going to do the test intervals to find out where the second derivative is positive and negative. So let's go back to that example that we've seen, that graph. That was the equation y equals x cubed minus 9x. If I think about um, where its intercepts are, it's nice to factor this, and I picked nice numbers. This is x times x squared minus 9, and that factors as x times x minus 3 times x plus 3. So we have x intercepts at the point negative 3, 0, 0, 0, and 3, 0. And then our y-intercept is also um, was listed in there, and it was 0, 0. So to find where we're increasing and decreasing, we're going to take the first derivative. So the first derivative is 3x squared minus 9. I'm going to factor out a 3. I get 3 times x squared minus 3. And that factors as 3 times x minus the square root of 3 and x plus the square root of 3. The first derivative equals 0 when x equals the square root of 3 or negative square root of 3. That makes one of those factors 0. So those are our critical points when x equals negative square root of 3 or x equals the square root of 3. And if I do the first derivative test, we find out that the graph is increasing, decreasing, increasing. So we have a relative max when x is negative square root of 3 and its y value will be 6 squared of 3. We have a relative min 
when x is square root of 3 and the y value is negative 6 square roots of 3. But this whole lesson is about concavity, so we are going to take the second derivative. So we will be taking the derivative of 3x squared minus 9. That derivative is 6x. We know that the second derivative um, is equal to 0 when x equals 0. So we will be using this number for our second derivative test. We have 0 on the line. We are checking out the second derivative. Left of 0, I picked the number negative 1. When x equals negative 1, the second derivative is 6 times negative 1, which is a negative number, which means we are concave down left of 0. Picking a number to the right of 0, bigger than 0, I picked x equals 1, and we find that the second derivative is 6 times positive 1, which is positive 6, positive number, which means we are concave up to the right of 0. Notice that we change from concave down to concave up. So the point 0, 0 is an inflection point. And here I have a graph of the function. In our graph, notice that I have the x-intercepts labeled negative 3, 0, 0, 0. 3, 0. We are concave down, left of 0, concave up, right of 0, and I have the local min and max also showing as well. So we are going to be using the first derivative test and the second derivative test to sketch a graph of our functions, and um, that's going to be a later lesson, but we can start now. So let's look at another example. Let's look at f at x equals x minus 2 raised to the 2 thirds power. Looking at the first derivative, we have f prime of x equals 2 thirds x minus 2 to the negative 1 third, which we can rewrite as 2 over 3 times x minus 2 to the 1 third. The first derivative does not equal 0 because the numerator can't equal 0. And the first derivative is undefined when the denominator is 0, and that happens when x equals 2. So our only critical point is when x equals 2. Doing the first derivative test, we find that we are decreasing left of 2 and increasing to the right of 2. Now we are wanting to look at the curvature, and so we're going to take the second derivative. The second derivative is 2 thirds times negative 1 third times x minus 2 to the negative 4 thirds power. I rewrite that as negative 2 divided by 9 x minus 2 to the 4 thirds. And I actually rewrote it another way. 4 thirds as an exponent is the same thing as taking a number, raising it to the 2 thirds power, and then squaring it. And I wanted to do that because, remember when we square any number, we don't get a negative answer. We either get 0 or a positive number. So just looking at the second derivative, I see that the numerator is negative, and the denominator is always positive. So when I do my second derivative test, I should find that the second derivative is negative, which means we will be con concave down everywhere. So, f double prime of x, so the second derivative equals 0, has no solution because my numerator is negative 2, so it doesn't happen. When is the second derivative undefined? Well, that's when the denominator is equal to 0, and that happens when x equals 2. We're going to do our second derivative test. I have the line. It's representing my second derivative, f double prime of x. If I pick a number smaller than 2, like 1, when I plug it into the second derivative, I actually end up with the second derivative equals negative 2 ninths, so it's a negative number, we're concave down. When I plug in a number to the right of 2, like 3, 
I also get the second derivative equal to negative 2 ninths, which means we're concave down to the left of, um, to the right of zero. So concave down, concave down. It did not change concavity, so we do not have an inflection point for this graph. Not every graph has an inflection point, so no inflection point for this function. And here is a graph of the function. We are decreasing and concave down, and then we are increasing and concave down. It stays concave down everywhere. Now we're going to talk about an example from economics called diminishing returns. A point of diminishing returns is actually just the inflection point. So diminishing returns is related to the concavity of a graph. We want to look at when a graph changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa. Um, so we're going to let y equal sales in thousands of dollars and we're going to let x equal the advertising costs in thousands of dollars. So the sales is modeled by this equation. y equals negative one-tenth x cubed plus 6x squared plus 400, where our advertising costs are going from zero to $40,000. So advertising costs from zero to $40,000. y is going to be our actual sales. So the first derivative is negative three-tenths x squared plus 12x. If we were to look for the critical points, we'd find we have critical points when x equals 0 and x equals 40. And, um, and you check the second derivative, or sorry, when you do the first derivative test, we find that the slope is positive during the whole interval from 0 to 40. We want to look for an inflection point, so we need to know the second derivative. The second derivative is negative 3 fifths x plus 12. We find that the second derivative equals 0 when x equals 20. And doing the second derivative test, we end up with concave up to the left of 20 and concave down to the right of 20. So that means we have an inflection point when x equals 20. And we actually find that the output is 2,000. And remember that this is in thousands of dollars. So $2,000 is actually $2 million. So if we spend $20,000 in advertising, we are going to have $2 million in sales, which not bad return. Let's look at the graph of this function, we have a y-intercept of 0, 0,400, so even if we spend zero dollars on advertising, we're still going to make $400,000 $400, in sales, which is not bad. We're increasing during the whole interval, but it starts concave up and then it goes concave down. When you think about what the first derivative is, it's dy dx, change in sales divided by change in advertising cost. So here we have positive change in sales for positive change in advertising cost, but it's not changing quite as fast once you go past 20, which means we're not really balancing out making those extra um, costs in advertising. And so usually in economics, people do not want to go past the um, point of diminishing returns. They would choose to do $20,000 in advertising. They would not do any more advertising.